everybody, I'm Joey Evans, and today we're going to take a look at, I'm going to butcher this name, but um, it is Dedelos. Did I get that? It sounded right. It sounds right coming out. Dedelos. Either way, it's fun to say. I'm not sure if that's exactly it, but this is um, Labyrinth with a Minotaur. It's a really cool little, like, it's a, it's a quick 30-minute game. The weird thing about this is the player count on it is three to six. So this is pretty much a first person to escape not only the Minotaur, but to make it out of the Labyrinth. So um, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on this, and I'm glad this finally hit the table. But before I go into that, let's do a quick overview about how it's played. Okay, we are set up for a game of Daedalus right now. And this is pretty much, you're going to try to escape the Labyrinth and the Minotaur. So we are set up for three players here, and in three players there are two exits. You have to get to these exits, but there's no way to get to these exits. Well, the map is being built as the turns progress. And the whole goal is to be the first one out of this labyrinth and to make sure this guy does not get you. So, how is it played? It's very simple. It goes through, everybody gets a turn, and on your turn, you're gonna get three actions. Now, these three actions, you can choose any of these three, but it can't be the same action three times. You can choose one action twice and another action, but it just can't be the same action three times. So, how does this happen? Well, first off, the first thing is to do is you can play a card, or sorry, play a tile. So for example, say if I'm the green character right here, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see here. Wow, I don't have nothing good here. So we're gonna go ahead and place this one. I guess I'm gonna go here for place one, and then two, moving is something else you can do. You could also move. And then I could also place another tile if I wanted to place Say this one right here, a four-way intersection. All right, so that is one, move, and then two, three. And I cannot move there because that's my third action. So there we go. Then I'm going to draw back up from this bag, and I'm going to draw back up to three tiles, just like this. All right, so that's those are two of the actions, move and place a tile. Now, quick thing about placing a tile. I went a bit further in the game here so we can spread everybody out so you can kind of see about the strategy of placing a tile. One thing is you can place a tile anywhere that does not have a tile unless you'll notice there are stars on some of these. If you've got one with a star, you can cover one without a star. Or, for example, right here, this right here has two stars. I could put a three star on top of it. So you can kind of build up. That's what stars allow you to do. One other thing too is you can start to block people off. This is kind of it's a little bit mean. That's a lot mean. So you can block somebody off. However, I cannot just simply block them off like if this guy was standing right here. I can't just block him off here. All right, I've got to give, I've got to give him room. I've got to give him room to do two valid turns. So... If he's here, or even if he's here, I could go ahead and this could be my move here. There we go. So then I've blocked off that path for him. Now, on his next turn, if he happens to have it, well, he can then place this one with three stars on top of this. So that now gives him another avenue to go this way. Or he could also place it if he wanted to right here that kind of opens that up to allow him to move through there. So there are options if you do kind of get sealed off. Now, those are two options, play and move. You're going to do that a lot. Another action you could do is push. If you're in the same area as another tribute or another character, you can push them into an adjacent tile. And there's also something you could do is discarding tiles. If you do this, this is the only thing you can do on your turn. If you don't like anything you have, you just toss them back and then you get three more out of the bag. So it's kind of refreshing your hand. Okay, and a couple other things too is there is a collapse tile out there that you actually collapse one of these exits. You won't ever be able to collapse both because of the number of tiles in there, but you can collapse those. If you see someone go into a tile, you can drop it up and it collapse. Now, we have not mentioned the Minotaur yet, all right? So the Minotaur will show up once you start to grab these tiles right here, all right? So once one of these guys comes up, then you are going to bring the Minotaur out, all right? And then the Minotaur is going to move depending on how many of these you have out. So first time he comes out, then he's going to move one. There we go. And then if you bring out another one, then he'll be able to move two. Now again, once he hits somewhere, he has to turn. Once he starts moving in a direction, he has to continue in that direction until he hits an intersection. And then he can turn 
and he can move two, so he will be able to get this guy. One other thing you can notice here is right here there at the four intersections, you're going to have little minotaur kind of, it looks like trap doors. So the whole thing is, if there's another one of these somewhere else in the labyrinth, he can use these as secret passages. So say this, there's one over here, he can move from here to here. So he can use those to travel faster in the dungeon or in the labyrinth to get back and forth. Now, what happens if you're actually taken by a minotaur? So if, for example, this minotaur over here and gets this guy, just like this, then this guy is going to come off the board. All of those tiles that he has are going to go back into the bag. And the minotaur is also going to go back on the board or back off the board. Sorry. Then he's going to come back out later. Now, these tiles that are out, the red ones are going to go back into the bag and the white ones are going to be discarded from the game. So that way the minotaur is not going to be quite as strong later in the game. And the next turn, this guy is going to come back at the entrance again. He's going to draw three more tiles. He's going to continue from the entrance being a bit further behind. And that's it. That's not all the rules, but that is a very quick and dirty about how you play Daedalus. So let's send it back and see what we thought about it. Okay, so that is Daedalus. That is a pretty much a quick overview about how to play the game. Again, not all the rules and just a quick to give you a feel of it. I will say, I mentioned this before, but the player count at being three to six is a little bit different because you can't really have two players, which my wife and I like to play. So that's why this has not hit the table for us recently. I mean, it took a while for it to hit the table for the first time, but once we did, it hit the table a lot and I saw it coming out, I think because it's only 30 minutes. So being 30 minutes, and it really is only 30 minutes. And it also is very action packed because there's not a lot you can do. You can place a tile, you can move. There's not a lot you can do, which makes everything go really quick. Now, the biggest thing I have to say about this that maybe for some people they can't handle this, this game is mean. It is mean, but it's not, I feel like, I don't like mean games generally. I don't like the whole take that type of thing, but it tends to work in this for a couple of reasons. Number one, because the game is quick. Take that in a six, seven, eight hour game, even like a two or three hour game, it feels bad, right? In a shorter game that's this, around 30 minutes, it's not that bad. It's, I think it's honestly 20 to 30 minutes, but um, it doesn't feel as bad because it almost seems funny. There's a lot of, when take that happens here, you're not angry. It's just, it's funny because you know what's going to happen. As the person starts getting closer and closer to the exit, it's, it's pretty, there are really funny moments when you put it out there and you see them getting closer to the exit. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, guess you're making a left turn. Or you see them going down a hallway and then you just block it and you just end the hallway. And then what's great is you don't know what they have in their hand because they may have something with more stars. So then you can drop it or they can drop it. And then all of a sudden, no, that's not, an, that's not an end. That is actually a corridor with two openings. So then of course they can move and then you're continually trying to block them. But the more you block them, the less you're moving yourself. So there's a really neat push and pull on that about how much you're going to play offense, how much you're going to play defense. And you really have to watch everyone else because they're slowly, and the visual part of it is great because you start off right there in the center and you're slowly making your way towards the exits. And you see it kind of build, it kind of unfolds and you see them, initially you're going to, want to go a straight line. Well, that's not possible normally. You're going to have to deviate, you're going to have to go this way, this way, and then you have to backtrack if someone blocks you off and you can't get out. All of that makes for a very enjoyable experience, especially as you're watching everyone else do that. Then you throw it on top of that, the Minotaur. The Minotaur, when he shows up, I really enjoy that because the Minotaur, the way he moves, I really like. You can't just control the Minotaur and you can't just turn him and chase one person. He's going to continue down those paths until he hits something where he has to then turn. And then you can kind of pivot his movement but he can also travel fast through those trap doors at those intersections, which kind of makes sense thematically because this is his domain. So he can actually travel quicker because he knows the area. So you are adding that whole dropping of the tiles and blocking people in to the Minotaur moving around. And then you've got bag pulling, I guess, not really bag building. So you're pulling those forward and trying to see which tiles you get. So this actually, this was a huge surprise because again, I knew when reading that, I'm like, oof, it's pretty, pretty aggressive. It's pretty mean, pretty take that. But this one, 
really works. I've played this with several people and even people that don't like take that kind of laugh and enjoy this because it's a quick 20 to 30 minute game. I'm coming in at an eight on this. This game is extremely enjoyable. And I almost wanted to say whimsical. I mean, look at that cover. I mean, of course you can't say it's very light, but it feels, it's just fun and funny. And I really enjoy this game. And again, this is a game that has some strategy, but a lot of fun. And this is one that I can see hitting the table at the end of the night, a lot coming forward. And it has flown under the radar. So this was, this was a very, very enjoyable game. We're coming in at an eight on this. So that's a seal of approval. I think if you like this style of game, and it's also very unique, the way everything unfolds in front of you, it's enjoyable. So I would definitely recommend checking this out. Didelos. It's fun to say, even if it's not accurate, it sounds good. Didelos. So Labyrinths, Minotaur, push your luck, but not mean, enjoyable. All right, I'm Joe Evans, and I'll see you later on the channel. Hey folks, thanks for joining us for that video. If you haven't yet, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hey, make sure you check out what's happening where I'll cover an app on an iOS or a Switch device, and you can check it out along with me. Thanks very much. You've been watching The Dice Tower.